The spirit of the Lord is saying to each one of us today that it is time for you to move from just a place where you are surviving to a place of favor for your future. This is key because God has shalom for you, the peace, the prosperity, also financial. He also has the calling for you so you can move from survival into favor for your future. And that is what I am going to be talking about today in this weekly word of prophetic encouragement. My name is Arlene Westerhoff and welcome to my weekly word of prophetic encouragement. These words are meant to help you to access the more that God has for you. If you are someone who is wanting the more, who is hungry for the more, then I'm just going to ask you to type into the chat right now. I am hungry for the more. Why? Because that is your prophetic act of faith to say, Lord, I'm engaged and I want the more that you have for me for my future. In this weekly word today, I'm going to be talking about how to move from maintenance or subsistence to actually the favor of God for your future. And it is something that we all need right now. Before I start, however, I just want to say to you, if you haven't already done it, I'm going to ask you right now just to take a moment to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Arlene Westerhoff. And when you do, be sure to hit the bell icon so that you can be notified every time I release a new weekly word of prophetic encouragement. Now we're talking today about moving from subsistence, just getting by, to moving into an aspect of the favor of God that guarantees your future. And that is so important in the time in which we're living right now. And as we start to talk about that, I'm going to reference the book of Ruth. Many of us know the story, Naomi and her husband Eliezer, they left their home in Bethlehem and went to live in the land of Moab. That was in a time of famine and the famine, as we know from history, historical records saying the famine was so pervasive and lasted so long that literally four empires went under in that time. The famine took place in 1300 before Christ. Anyway, Ruth and Eliezer and their two sons, they left Bethlehem, they went to the land of Moab, and the two young men, eventually they met two women, Moabite women, and they married. However, after a few years, Eliezer, Naomi's husband, died, as well as both of her sons. Naomi was grief-stricken. Not only had she lost her husband, but she had lost her sons. Essentially, she had lost her future. And so one day she turned to her two daughters-in-law and she said to them, you know, my daughters, even if I could give, get pregnant today, would you wait around, you know, for the son or my son that I would bear, sons that I would bear to grow up. She said, no, that's not right. I love you both. Go back to your parents' homes. And that way, as widows, you can remarry and have a chance at a future and starting a family yourselves. And many of us know the story. Ruth looked at Naomi and she refused. And she said, where you go, I will go. And where you die, I will die. And Naomi returned to Bethlehem with Ruth. Now, this is the first key to moving from subsistence to the favor of God. And that key is that Ruth gave up everything. She was willing to leave her family behind in order to be committed to Naomi. Many of us, the Lord is saying there is a deeper level of surrender that he is asking from us in this time. And that deeper level of surrender has to do with being willing to put it all on the table. Even the blessings of God from a past season, things that we know were from God to lay it all down on God's altar 
and to say, Lord, I'm willing to lay this all down. Give me back what you want me to keep, but I am following you into my future. And so that's the first key. And so as you listen to that, would you just type in, you know, I am following God into my future by laying it all down. I am following God into my future by laying it all down. Anyway, Naomi and Ruth, they arrived in Bethlehem. And Naomi's grief could be seen because when her old friends, the women of Bethlehem saw her, they said, isn't this Naomi? And she said, don't call me Naomi, but call me Mara, because life has been very bitter for me. That is a statement of itself. Anyway, Ruth and Naomi, they found a place to stay and to live. And Ruth went out to glean grain. Back in that time, the farmers left grain on the ground um, so that those who were strangers and foreigners would be able to harvest it and not have to starve to death. So Ruth went out into a field. It happened to be Boaz's field. And she started to gather grain for she and her mother-in-law. And Boaz was good to her. And he told her to stay in his field. And she worked there for several months. But one day, and this is key, Naomi looked at Ruth and she said, Ruth, and these are my words, it's my paraphrase. This is Ruth chapter three, verses one to five. And you can read them yourself. She said, Ruth, you know, it's time that we start to look out for your future. And she said, Boaz is one of our kinsmen redeemers. And a kinsman redeemer was a close family member who in the event of the death of another family member would be willing to marry the widow and to provide her with children so that the family line of the dead man could continue. And so Naomi said to Ruth, you know, he is one of these. And so Ruth, take off what you're wearing and put on your best clothes. Now, this is a second key to moving from subsistence where you're just getting by to entering the favor of God to guarantee your future in the sense of your calling here on this earth. Those garments that Ruth took off, Ruth was a widow, so she was wearing widow's garments, but they were, they signified identity, but they also signified an old calling, an old calling. Ruth's widow's garments were a sign that her calling to be the wife of her dead husband had ceased and she was still wearing those garments. And Naomi said to Ruth, it's time to take off your widow's garments, put on the best clothes that you have and perfume yourself and go to Boaz's fields. I'm going to continue with what else she told Ruth, but I just wonder today, what are your old garments? Are your old garments, for example, old emotions that are preventing you from moving forward? Unforgiveness, disappointment, emotional pain, or are your old garments, for example, a calling that you've been very successful in up to date, but about which the Lord is saying, it's time for you to lay it down so that he can clothe you with a new garment, a new mantle, a new calling for this time in which we're living. That's something that each of us really needs to be aware of. And so what did Ruth do? She submitted to her mother-in-law and did what she was told. And that is something that shows Ruth's heart was ready to move from just getting by to entering a new level of favor with God for her future. She could have said to her mother-in-law, you know, it's just, what? You're trying to pair me up with Boaz? He's an old man. But no, she didn't say that. She did what Naomi had advised her because she trusted that Naomi had the best in mind for her. And she submitted to Naomi and she did that. And she went to Boaz's farm. Now, when she got there, you know, Boaz was celebrating with his uh, workers. And then he went, the scriptures say in Ruth chapter three, 
you know, and uh, read that for yourself. It's a fascinating chapter. And she uncovered his feet and she lay down at his feet once he was asleep. Now that was a sign in ancient times that a woman wanted a man to take up his rights as her kinsman redeemer so that he could give her children. Anyway, Boaz, he woke up in the middle of the night to see Ruth at his feet. This woman who had laid it all down by following her mother and law Naomi back to Bethlehem. This woman who was a hard worker, this woman who had a standard of excellence here, this woman who was submitted to her mother-in-law's authority, even though she was an adult. And Boaz, uh, God touched Boaz's heart and he gave Ruth favor with Boaz. And Boaz said to her, I'm going to do what's necessary. I will arrange this and I will not rest until the matter is settled later today. And that is exactly what Boaz did. Ruth went from being a Moabite, a cursed race for the Israelites, to becoming the great grandmother of King David himself, and also one of the ancestors, one of the earthly ancestors of Jesus, our Messiah. That is how much the favor of God can change our destiny from just getting by to actually entering a level of favor that guarantees our future. And that is what I believe that God is saying to many of us today. It is time to lay down our old garments, take off the garments of mourning, whether it is bitterness, whether it is frustration, whether it's unforgiveness or even disappointment. And the Lord is saying, let me clothe you again, but with a new garment, a new calling for your season. And then the Lord saying that is going to transition you from just getting by to a level of favor that will guarantee your future. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just say, let the favor of God fall on each one of your people today. Lord, because we are submitted to authority, the authorities that you have placed in our lives, and Lord, because we are willing to say, Lord, we lay it all down, including even our callings in which you've blessed us so that you can give us a new calling and clothe us with new garments for this season. And Father, I pray that for all of your people watching today, this video, that that would be their reality our reality, Lord, and I speak it out now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you jettison us from the point of just having enough to a point of a new level of favor, because we know your heart in Jesus name. Amen. Thanks for watching this weekly word of prophetic encouragement. And I look forward to having you join me next week.